welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And we are just 24 hours away from Rusty Erasmus naming his first Springbok side of the 2024 season. His first side when he's officially back in charge as the head coach. And we are expecting to see at least two or three, I reckon, uh, uncapped players get their debuts on Saturday against Wales at Twickenham. What a place to be able to do to, to make your debut. And uh, I'm very excited to see what sort of team we put out against Wales. Because it is a bit of a balancing act, and that is Rusty Rasmus's words, not mine. We've got two things that we want to try and accomplish. First of all, you want to give new players a go. This is a new World Cup cycle. Um, you want to start bringing new players into the system and start building towards the 2027 World Cup. But at the same time, we've got, a, we've got an Ireland series in, in a few weeks' time that we have to win. You know, it's a massive series. And uh, this is the last and only game we get to really get our, our processes right for Ireland. So I can't afford to rotate too much, but I do think we'll see a few new uh, faces in the squad. Before we uh, do look at exactly what my potential predicted uh, 15 or 23 rather is, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Right, so this is what I'm throwing out there. And I've gone with a 6-2 split, which I'm not entirely convinced will be the case, um, but very interested to see what or how we go. So let's go through it, shall we? Uh, first thing first, Malcolm Marks will start. I think that is basically a given. I think that's about one of the few selections I think is pretty nailed on. Rusty Ross has spoken about the fact that he is fit and uh, that, as usual, they prefer to uh, to start players coming back from injury so they can manage their game time. You know, if, he, if it means that if Malcolm Marks has got 25 minutes in him or, or 35 minutes in him, they can take him off and, and put somebody else on who's you know playing rugby regularly, uh, as opposed to if they were to make an early substitution and uh, then he sort of fades out and they can't sort of change him later. So it's always kind of been the case with the Springbok management. Uh, I think they will have Oxenchair and uh, France by Herbert starting. Um, I think that we're going to try and dominate up front. And uh, I think, you know, we've, we've, we've seen the, the, the impact that uh, Vincent Koch, for example, is com coming off the bench. Um, I do think that Oxenchair... And Francis Cock obviously are a very good combo, and where they might look at that, for example, even with maybe sort of Boggy and Umbi potentially coming to the side, but um, France Mahoba never comes off the bench, really, you know, uh, for the Spring Mocks, generally always starts. Uh, so you might look at Nsuka Tunu, who's the only other sort of, uh, you know, only other loose head in the squad um, as, as an option, but um, I'd almost be surprised. Uh, might even see Nietzsche Vashir, but again, I'd probably be a bit surprised uh, if we do see him this weekend, unless France Mahoba gets given the weekend off. Um, so I think that will be the front row. I I'm almost certain the second row will be Ibn Etzebeth and Franco Moss. I'll be very surprised if we see Salman Murat start, um, although I do think he will be involved. Um, this is an interesting one. You know, I've, I've kind of sort of in between Pepsi Butelazi at six or Quaker Smith at six, for example. Um, Pepsi Butelazi very much being likened to see Ecclesi by John Plumtree. He has been playing in the number six jersey for the Sharks. I wonder if there's been a bit of national influence there, you know, sort of saying, you know, this is a potential route for him. Uh, somebody else has been playing in that role uh, for the Storms a couple of times is Evan Roos. Uh, also somebody been playing in the number six jersey. Um, Pierce Depp's toy I've got at seven, obviously, and I think he will be the captain. Rassi Rasmus, when I asked him about the captaincy on Thursday, um, we sort of went straight to Pierce Depp to toy and then kind of threw in, oh, also there's options like Evan Etzebeth, maybe Bongi Manambi. So it did sound to me like Peter Steph the toy is going to be the likely captain. Um, if it, number eight over there, if Evan Lewis is not at six, I do expect him to start at eight. We've got no Jasper Visa. Um, I, I, again, quite a bit my start. He could start at six or, or eight, um, or he could potentially come off the bench. I think he's been so good off the bench. I think he, they'll probably look to sort of replicate that impact player. Um, for me, if I have to close next to Mike Leibach, that makes sense. They are, they've generally been very loyal to to certain players. Uh, Mike Leibach, for example, has been brilliant for the Springboks, um, bar one or two uh, shady kicking performances. And it's amazing how he has one bad game for the Stormers, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, we were binning him. We're talking about players who single-handedly took apart Scotland, you know, who, who really helped us beat um, France with, with the sort of his general play. Um, it was very important for us during that World Cup. Maybe, yeah, Bonjour Potter came in, semi-final, final, clutched up, but do not underestimate the impact Marley Bach made, who was the breakthrough player of the year, by the way, last year. Uh, the back line, the rest of the back line, I think that's all the people will start. You need a bit of experience in that back three. Rumor has it, according to report, that Edel van der and Kuhn Horn are being back to start. Apparently, also, uh, up in the Fassi and Chester, Feinberg and Gobazulu, potential options at 15. I do think we're going to go with the try and test Damien De Lindy and Jesse Creel in the midfield. Este Hazen is available. Might see him on the bench. Might even see him start, but I'll be surprised. I think that's going to be the combination to, to, to play against Ireland, and they'll want to get a bit of game time in together. Uh, and then the bench is going to be interesting. Now, Rusty Rasmus sort of indicated that they'd like to see other hooking op hooker options, um, you know, which for me indicates that um, 
you know, that we might see in somebody else. So for me, I think we might then see a day from Andrew Hugo Fenter. Don't think we'll see Joseph Weber. Um, but he also said he don't want to give too many players a chance. So Bongi Manambi, I think, could be a bit of a coin toss between those two. Innsbruck, it's one I expect to see on the bench. Uh, Vitzer Kock, I expect to see on the bench as well. Sal Murat, I think, is somebody that they they really rate quite highly, especially with no Jean Klein. They want to see exactly what he can offer, especially if they want to look at uh, doing a sort of a 6-2 split. Arches Neyman, for example, uh, coming back, Franco Mostert, but no Lua de Jager in the, in the, in the squad. <coughs> No Jean Clay, so they are missing a couple of players there. Um, then I think at this stage, if they go with the, the, the 6-2 split, I'd like to see Ben Jason Dixon get a chance. I think he's very much a potential successful PS Dev to Toy. And then you've got to have Quacker Smith. He will be in the 23, will Quacker Smith. The best impact player in the world, really. I think one of the best forwards and flanks in the world, definitely. Um, and if we do go to the 6-2 split, I expect it to be Grant Williams and probably Sasha Feinberg on the who can cover 10, 12, 15, and very highly rated by the Springbok coaching staff. That's my predicted team. I do wonder about maybe Morne van den Berg. You know, uh, watching this training does seem to be quite involved, does seem to be getting a bit of uh, of, of backing there. So it might be an outside selection. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.